Hey, it's Denise from Loomahead.com. In today's video, I want to show you how to make the belt loop hat. And uh, this is a, my own design, which I love a lot. And it's not a difficult hat to make. You do have to make two, diff two separate uh, parts to it. There's the hat and the flower. If it's for female, you could put the flower. If you want to make a his, uh, his and her, then this is hers and here's his. Okay, it's more of a beanie and um, it's made with two different textured yarns on uh, my personal one was made on a 36 peg loom but uh, it actually works really well on the 41 peg depending on who you're making it for and what the style um, is whether you want it loose or fitted and uh, and it has a, a flower the flower we're not going to uh, focus on on this video there is a video on how to make the flower and i'll give you a link to that video in the description as well as on this video the only difference in uh, this particular flower as opposed to the one um, on the site or on the video is that this one has three colors and so you're going to change colors on the first uh section you're going to then change colors for four rows into the flower and then four more rows and you're going to change colors again. That's the change uh, that you're going to make from uh, the pattern and the video that's on the site. Okay, so let's start on the hat. I do like to mark uh, my loom because I, I get it easily distracted and then I, I don't know where I'm at. And so right after casting on, and you could use whatever method uh, works best for you with this uh, hat, once you do that, um, you're going to need to do a double rip stitch. And that's going to be two knit, two purl, two knit, two purls. And so if you'd like, you can um, mark your loom before you start, okay? And uh, we start at the bottom with the smoother uh, yarn. It doesn't have to be a darker yarn, it could be a lighter yarn. In my particular case, I like uh, the hat to be dark and the belt portion to be light. And so my key to making this uh, stand out is not so much the color as the texture. So this is my uh, Simply Soft and uh, this one's black I'm going to use blue and then um, this is a rougher looking textured type of yarn it is by uh, Vanna's Choice yarn and I'll put the actual uh, yarn uh, for both of them on the website so you know what to you could use whatever you like this just works better to use a smooth and a more rougher textured um, yarn to make things stick out. Okay, so let's start by casting on the loom. This is um, a large gauge loom and so it's a good idea to use two strands, okay, especially if you're using this Simply Soft yarn which is um, actually pretty thin for being worsted weight. Um, so we take our are two strands and we make a slip knot and the way I'm able to use um, two strands with just one uh, scheme of yarn is that I pull one from here and the yarn that's wrapped around here so one from here and one from here gives me the two okay so you get your um, slip knot and I like to put mine on the anchor peg you can put one, yours on the first peg if you like. And I'm gonna do a simple um, E-wrap, right, all around. Okay, so I'm back at the front, and this is my first peg here. And uh, I'm gonna do a garter stitch and uh, the garter stitch is made up of one row of knit and one row of purl and one row of knit and one row of purl and so we're going to do three knits and three purls three rows you know alternate so the first row we're going to do is a knit and for my knit i'm going to use the u wrap which means i'm not going to do this you know i'm not going to wrap it completely i go peg by peg and the first thing i do is i grab my yarn and i come this way and that forms a U. And that's how I'm going to do my knit. Okay, completely around. I'm gonna keep going. 
and this is going to be my first row of my garter stitch. I'm doing a U wrap. Okay, row one. Keep going. So I finished my knit stitch. I'm back at the front, um, and now I'm going to do uh, my purl, which is the next row. And the purl, you do that simply by put your uh, hook right here into your loop and pull up your yarn to create another loop. And you take the loop that is on the peg and you take it off the peg, sorry, like that. And you take that new peg and you put the new peg on, I'm sorry, you created the new loop, you put the new loop on your peg and pull. Okay, that's your purl. One more time. You go to your peg and make sure your yarn is under. Your yarn on top is knit, your yarn under is purl. Get your hook, put your hook through the loop, sweep up the yarn, and create a new loop. Take the loop, the old loop, off the peg, put the new loop on the peg, and pull. Okay? And it goes a lot quicker when, of course, you're not teaching someone and uh, you can sit the way you normally sit. I don't, I'm not standing when I knit, which I am right now, which makes it a little harder. But um, once you get the swing of it, um, it goes a lot quicker, right? Okay, so we did a, a row of knit. Here's the purl process. Now we're gonna do a row of purl. And so if you picked up the pattern, um you know that we're gonna we did a row of knit we're doing a row of purl then we're gonna do another knit another purl another knit another another purl so that it's six rows of alternating knit and purl for um this first part of the border which is the garter stitch okay so when you've done your six rows of alternating knit and purl let's come back so we can do the next part of the hat So I finished um, my six rows of the garter stitch, and as you can see, um, that part for me is is pretty thin, right? It's it's this part right here, and uh, and if you'd like, you can make the garter stitch border much thicker. You could just keep going and as, do as many as twelve or eighteen of this garter stitch if you want the garter stitch border on the hat. In fact, if you want to look and see what that looks like, just stop by the uh, website and you'll see a picture of this hat with a thicker border uh, of garter stitch. But for me, I just wanted that little strip of, of garter stitch. And now I'm moving on uh, to this double rib stitch uh, here on this hat. And I do first, just in the dark tone or, or the smooth tone, whatever you wanna call it, I do three rows of that. So three rows of this double rib stitch, which is the two knit, two purls, two knit, two purls. And you guys already know how to do the knit and purls. Um, but unlike the garter stitch, now I'm going to do the U wrap. And the reason being is that I want these to be a little looser than the bottom ones because I do want them to st stick out. And so when we do the U wrap, um, the those knit stitch they look thicker than they do when you do the U wrap or the flat stitch so um, this is a E wrap knit stitch and I'm sorry for all the jargon but it just it's gonna make it easier to, to understand in the long run um, we want these to stick out so when we go to do the knit stitch on this uh, pattern again we're doing the E wrap where we wrap the peg Okay, so that's how we're doing the knit stitch, right? Which is two knit and now two purls. And we're gonna do that in this smooth, darker tone for three rows. Two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls, and we'll see you back at the front.
Okay, so um, I finished the first portion, uh, which was the garter stitch and then the double rib stitch. I'm now on row ninth was the one I finished and I'm going to row 10. And this is where we start um, the second part, which is now the two-tone part. And so we're gonna do um, all of the knit stitch in this darker one and then come back and do the rib stitch with this one and we're going to do that one row at a time so I'm first going to wrap my knit stitch and then my yarn will stretch till I get to the next one and then I wrap it and then my yarn again stretches past these two because I'm skipping uh, the pearls and going to the next one which is the knit and I'm going to continue to do that all the way around right and if you like um, you can you know knit off as as you go along to your next one if you want to or you could just you know wrap all of your knit stitches and then come back and knit off and then the next row will be the purl so let's meet up back at the front So I did um, all of the knits and uh, this was my last one. So here's my yarn, my working yarn, and I leave it right where it's at, right? Because I'm coming back to the front so I can do um, my purl, right? So I got my other yarn and I made a slip knot and I'm gonna put it on the first one, which is here, right? Okay, and I'm sorry, I gotta bring this back over here again so that I can um, tie that one to the, the working yarn. So I'm knitting off here, right right next to the, the, the next one, which is the purl. And I'm going to um, just make a little knot here so that I don't lose this one, okay? so. So this was my knit, right? And I'm here at my purl and I put the slip knot on the first one that I'm gonna purl. And I'm taking that and I'm gonna tie it just slightly so I don't lose it, okay? Just a little knot right there, nothing major. You don't have to super knot it or anything. Okay, that's just to make sure um, I keep that yarn. Okay, so here's that slip knot and I'm gonna purl it. Okay. And I have started now my gray and I can continue the rest of the row when I'm purling, okay? This, I'm working right now on row number 10. So here was the knit, I'm purling, and with my purl, I take it to the next one. I don't knit these, because I'm only purling, I come to the next purl. I hope that makes sense. So knit two, purl two, because I'm doing the nub, double rip, rib, stitch okay these two are knit so I'm skipping them I've already knitted them with the darker one right so I skip them and go to this one and purl so I'm only doing purl now and I'm gonna finish the row so finish the row and we are gonna do this same technique that we're doing right now right knit first with dark then purl stitch with the light and we're gonna do that until we get to row number 16 and then I'll see you back again here at the beginning with rows 10 through 16 already done in the rib double rib stitch knitting in smooth dark and purling in light uh, uh, textured yarn Okay, see you back at the front. 
So we're back at the front and um, this is what my work looks like and don't worry about this because I'm going to show you um, how to clear that up. It looks nice and stretched now but when you take uh, the hat off the loom this gets a little funky um, but don't worry about it because like I said there is a good nice way to, to clean that up so don't panic there. Alright so I finished my pearl right like this as such. And um, and I finished my rows of um, knitting, right? And so we're back here again, right? But we're back here again, and the last one was a pearl, and we need to start again over here. So first of all, this is my 16. And now I, I'm done with this color. Okay, so I'm going to cut here. And then I need to bring this one back over here. So we get our trusty scissor and cut this one. And then put it aside. You're done with that color. From this point on you're working on only one color. And this one we need to bring back to here which is where our working uh, anchor peg is. So we stretch our yarn from here over to here and we're going to start knitting. But before we do that, let's knit off this first peg right here. Here's the anchor peg, so this is always my first peg. And like before, I'm going to knot this to here to attach it. And um, people have different ways of doing this. This is my way, and uh, it's not the gospel. So whatever works for you, you do it. If you don't want a knot at all, don't put a knot. You know, this is what I do. It makes me feel more comfortable, and I know that I've washed things before, and, uh, and they don't unravel when I do this, so I feel safe with it, okay? All right, so um, we did those 16 rows and um, we're going to keep going now and from this point on until the right before the last three, we're going to do, uh, we're going to knit. Okay, so now we're going to do that top portion that's here and we're going to just do a regular E-wrap uh, knit stitch. And um, you have a, a number of options as to how many rows you can do. I'm going to do um, 40, right, uh, for me. If you want to do one for um, like a child, you could go up to 28 or, or 31 rows um, and if you want to do for an adult you can go as much as 45 so that's up to you we're at 16 so I'm just going to keep knitting in this um, e-wrap uh, stitch like I said until I reach I don't know between 38 and 40 I'm going to check to see um, I would say most likely I'm going to go up to um, the 40 okay so let's uh, do the number of rows that you want for the number of stitches I would tell you about about four rows per inch and most adult hats are between eight and nine inches so once you get there let's get to back to the front so we can close the hat okay see you then Here's the hat with uh, the 31 rows of knitting and as you can see it's a very, um, I don't know, a, a small almost beanie, it's very fitted and so this is what you'll get if you do only 31 rows. So I've done the 40 rows and um, my hat is going to be longer than the one that I just showed you 
and um, we're going to use do just a basic uh, gathered method. You can also do the flat drawstring bind off and um, if you go to the website I do have Jeannie's video and a written pattern for that bind off. Okay, but we're just going to do the basic um, gathered method and for that just take your string and go around the loom okay almost completely around and just give yourself just a little wiggle room and cut the yarn there's lots of different ways of, of doing this you can either get a um, yarn needle and uh, feed your thread this way, right? You would feed the thread through the needle and then feed the needle in through each one of the loops and just pull them off and close it that way. I found it easier to just get my needle and, uh, I'm sorry, my hook, and just as if I were doing a purl, um, stitch I just pull up the string and feed it through each one and then just um, pull the loops off um, off of the loom and that works for me so you could use it you could do it the other way where you use the yarn needle but um, for me this has worked really good Okay, so just keep um, feeding the working yarn through um, each loop until you've gotten all around the um, loom. And let's meet back here. We're back here at the front again, and this is the last one that we're going to do. And you can see my um, string is really short. Okay, so we've gone around and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull them off. And like I said, you could do it this way or you could just, with the needle, as you're going around, you can pull the loops off and start gathering them. Um, I just got to where I don't wanna use more tools than necessary, so this works with for me because then I only have to use the hook I don't have to go looking for yarn needles and um, I don't know I just like it better okay so keep going around till you've taken them all off so this is the last one and my hat is off of the loom and now I just pull my string a little and then put this, feed the string through the little hole and turn the hat around. And I really like this side, right? Because that would be all pearl. Okay, and then just, you know, close your hat real good. And make a knot. Now, if you want to put a pom-pom on this hat, when you're done closing it like this, then just take a crochet hook and feed this string back to the other side of the hat. And um, you'll be able to use this string. Of course, you need to cut it because it's too long. You'll be able to use this string to attach a pom-pom. Um, a I'm not going to do that. So... I'm not using it that way, but that's it. So your hat is finished. Your, um, wow, your <laughs> belt loop hat is basically done. But for many of you, this is an eyesore and you don't like it. So let me show you how to fix that. I took the leftover um, string that was here and I'm gonna feed it through my yarn needle. And um, what I'm gonna do is use this to help me um, 
basically f fix this to this. Okay, I'm gonna attach basically what I fix here, I'm gonna attach it to the hat, okay? So you put it on a string and then um, just wherever you're gonna start, and in my case, I'm gonna start right here. So I put it in through here and I make a knot. And everywhere that you end with the string, make a knot. And the reason you're gonna make a knot is because you're gonna cut. So you're gonna go from here to here and from here to here. And when you go from here to here, you're gonna make a knot here. And when you go from here to here, you're gonna make a knot because the string that goes from one side to the other, you need to cut that string off, otherwise the hat won't stretch it's gonna tighten up and you don't want that. And I'll show you what I mean as we go along. Okay, so your string is, is um, has a knot here, which you're gonna cut. And so just attach it anywhere so that it's like on hold. And then you're gonna come here to these strings. And you're gonna take, sorry, you're gonna take your crochet hook and grab the first one and then grab the one that's over that one and just come down with it and go to the next one and do the same thing and grab it and feed it upward okay and you're gonna keep doing that you see that it's it's collecting it and and holding on to it so it's not um, like popping up Okay, it, it keeps it held down. And you keep going. And I'm showing you with the lighter string so you could see it because if I do it with the lighter, with the darker one, you're not gonna see what I'm doing really well. Um, under this darker one, this lighter one is the darker. See it right here? And under this dark, there's the lighter one. But once you do this to the top uh, strands it pushes the other one down so so you don't have to worry about the the strings that are under you just have to worry about the ones that are on top okay so that was my last one and I pulled that one I pull my um, crochet hook off of it and I put the needle like that and then feed the needle through. And like I said before, you're gonna make a knot right there. Okay. Like that. Okay, if you didn't see it, let me do it again because I know that the, the thread is, is dark and um, it's not as much light here as there should be but basically you went into this little um, loop and you end up creating another loop as you're feeding the thread through you're creating a loop see there and you just feed the yarn through that loop and you create a knot and just not to have to keep you know, making a knot over again, you're gonna leave this here and you're gonna go to the next one, right here and do this and then come here and again, you're gonna make a knot. And then this string that you did from one side to the other, you just need to cut it, right? You're just gonna cut the string that came from here to here and that string that you're gonna create when you go from here to here, that part of that of the string, you don't need to cut it off. You just need to cut it so that um, your heart, your hat can stretch. Because if you leave this without cutting, um, your travel from one, um, I don't know, square to the next one, this is gonna keep it from becoming the size that you need. Because the good thing about this yarn is that it stretches. 
so that you know it could fit a bigger head or a smaller head and that's not going to happen if you don't cut this so okay so that's how you fix this and um you know anytime you stretch yarn from one to the other to from one side to the other you can do the same thing and i hope that helps that's the end of the belt loop hat and i'm going to show you how this one turned out at the end of the video so until the next project have a good one